So welcome everybody. Uh, today is a kind of uh, internal seminar since Constantina Zulumi, uh, who is uh, doing her PhD thesis under the supervision of Mirella Harsula and Chris Ephemiopoulos, who today is with us, <laughs> uh, will be uh, presenting uh, the recent findings uh, towards uh, her PhD thesis, uh, part of uh, her PhD thesis. You already have the, the title about the embody simulations, and I think we may start. Okay. Okay. okay, hello everybody. I am Constantina Zulumi. I'm a PhD student and uh, my supervisors are in the audience. It's uh, Thimiopoulos Christos and uh, Harsula Mirella. Uh, today's talk is about uh, an after determination of the multiple pattern speeds in a simulation of a Bart spiral galaxy. We are going to talk about Bart spiral galaxies. Uh, the one, the galaxy in the picture is a Bart spiral. There is a bar. Uh, in the center of this galaxy. And uh, well, we are, we are going to talk about multiple pattern speeds. Uh, until uh, recently, we can say, uh, there was a, an, the assumption of a single pattern speed uh, in the galactic disk, uh, which was considered to be the collective effect of all the stellar orbits uh, in the disk. Uh, we, we consider the, the community uh, considered that the whole structure uh, had a single angular velocity, with, which was the pattern speed of the bar. However, there were, uh, there were some works uh, that were based on, even on uh, observational da data, uh, observations in our galaxy and also in other galaxies. I have uh, given you here some bibliography. Uh, there, is a, there, are, there are some works that uh, provide evidence that there are, the spiral arms rotate at a slower pattern speed of a, the half value than the pattern speed of the bar. In our galaxy, a way to determine the pattern speed of the bar is to estimate the length of the bar. The length of the bar is considered to be uh, within the limits of the rotation radius. The rotation radius, sorry. <laughs> Okay, some technical issues, sorry. Okay, thank you. Okay. Is it all right? Okay. Uh, the pattern speed of the bar is estimated, as I said before, through the, uh, the determination of the correlation radius. The correlation radius is the radius in the galactic disk where the uh, the stars rotate at the same uh, speed, angular speed, uh, as the pattern, the pattern speed, the angular velocity of the bar. And uh, corrotation radius how can give us uh, evidence for the uh, value of the pattern speed. Uh, this plot here can help us uh, uh, can help us understand why because the black line the black curve is the, the angular velocity of the stars and the red curve is the pattern speed uh, the pattern speed uh, which is constant of course and uh, the section of these two curves can uh, can give us the rotation radius as a result the rotation radius uh, if we locate the correlation radius, we have uh, we can have an estimation for the pattern speed of the bar. Well, for the pattern speed of the spiral arms, uh, people that uh, uh, that uh, uh, that analyze observational data uh, follow another method. They they apply another method. This method is called uh, open cluster birthplace analysis. As most of us uh, know, uh, open clusters lie on the spiral arms of the Milky Way, our galaxy, and uh, they are consisted of young stars. 
so through this method, we uh, try to rotate these clusters backward in the time uh, along their orbits uh, according to their own uh, their own uh, ages uh, using some models of local angular velocity so we can uh, uh, determine the angle variation of the spiral arms uh, which can give us the uh, the pattern another pattern speed for the spiral arms uh, but it was not only uh, works that uh, were based on observational data that uh, give us evidence for a uh, uh, different pattern speeds on, uh, in the galactic disk. There have been some works also uh, in end-body simulation. The first one, the first uh, uh, paper that gave evidence for multiple pattern speeds uh, in galactic disk in end-body simulations of uh, uh, bad spiral galaxies was uh, Selwood and Spark in 1988. Well, uh, they tried uh, to to make the contours of the power spectrum of m equal to here uh, of m equal to perturbation uh, on the disk uh, as they are given from uh, from a Fourier analysis and uh, we can see uh, Selwood so that there are two maxima uh, the inner maxima maximum in a smaller radius at higher frequency and another ma maximum in a uh, in uh, at, at the outer radius of the disk uh, for with uh, a value of the of, 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 with the half value of frequency uh, so he the next step was to uh, to use two modes rotating together with two different pattern speeds someone would uh, uh, would consider these two modes to be disconnected because they have different pattern speeds the spiral arms rotate slower than the bar. So someone would uh, expect that these two modes uh, would be disconnected. Uh, but uh, he saw that at most, the most time, uh, in general, these two modes were connected. The spiral arms started at the ends of the bar. So uh, this is something we all, also observe. So, uh, this uh, the multiple pattern speeds is compatible with this the structure we observe the structure of the bar spiral galaxy with the spiral arms starting from at the ends of the bar we observe uh, at the sky <laughs> okay what about manifold theory uh, well uh, one of the main criticism for the manifold theory has been until recently uh, that there is, has been a work i will uh, mention it that uh, uh, gave new data uh, for this. Uh, the ma main criticism was th that uh, the assumption of a single pattern speed uh, in the galactic disk. But what, uh, the ma what is the manifold theory? Okay, uh, well, the Bart spiral galaxy has a different mechanism uh, than uh, a grand design galaxy because of the bar at the center of the, the galaxy. The bar is a strong perturbation. It's about it's about 50 percent, and uh, the perturbation is very strong. As a result, the orbits become uh, chaotic, and uh, there is a, a question: how a long-lived structure like a bar spiral galaxy uh, that has lifetime comparable to Hubble times uh, to be sustained? Uh, if it is uh, if in cor the corrotation radius, uh, the orbits become chaotic. Well, the answer was given by manifold theory, two groups, almost simultaneous, simultaneously: Romero, Gomez, Athanasula in Marseille, and uh, Voglis et, et al. in uh, uh, 2006 gave a theory, the manifold theory. Uh, what is, what are the manifolds? Well. Uh, if we consider the, the bar, okay. Aligned with the bar, there are two unstable uh, equilibrium Lagrangian points, L1 and L2. From these Lagrangian po uh, points, uh, ema the manifolds uh, emanating from these Lagrangian points uh, support dynamically and morphologically the spiral arms and the outer shell of the bar. The, uh, the invariant manifolds, this is this is the form of the invariant manifolds are all the initial conditions 
which uh, four coordinates in the phase space that integrated backwards, they uh, tend asymptotically to L1 and L2. As a result, a forward integration of these orbits gives this rich outflow, which uh, uh, we can see some recurrences. It's long living also, and uh, this answers the question we uh, talked about. And uh, uh, these recurrences, sometimes we can see them in the also in, uh, in real galaxies, such structures that manifolds, manifold theory gives us. And uh, we should say that, that uh, these manifolds are, uh, uh, are uh, made by the upper center of upper centers of the orbits, which is uh, something that uh, it is very it is representative of the surface density of the galaxy. As uh, uh, stars spend most of the, their time at the upper centers of their orbits. Okay. There was an ex uh, there was an, uh, a research uh, from Ephemiopoulos and his collaborators collaborators uh, or on 2019 uh, the end body experiment ex experiment of Kiziropoulos uh, in 2016 was uh, used uh, an end body uh, a self consistent end body simulation of a barred spiral galaxy and. Uh, the manifolds in this case were, were uh, uh, produced for different snapshots of the simulations. Uh, here, the manifolds have been uh, super uh, have been positioned over uh, the snapshots of n-body simulation, but these manifolds were produced with the assumption of a single pattern speed. But we still can see that they support well the. The, the structures of, of the end-body simulation. However, in this particular paper, there was even uh, analysis, another analysis, uh, at the radial profile of the angular velocity of m equal to uh, modes. Uh, well, when I refer to m equal to modes, I mean the bisymmetric structures like the spiral arms and the bar. These are the, the modes, the harmonics, I mean, of the Fourier analysis. I will talk about that later. We can see that uh, there are, in some cases, we can see two different plateaus, which means two different constant values of uh, the angular velocity of these m equal to structures, uh, two different plateaus. The one at uh, uh, radius, inner radius, which is okay, the pattern speed of the bar. Someone would expect that, but we can see another plateau at outer radius with a half value of the frequency, which reveals a second pattern speed for the spiral arms. So there was a need uh, first to locate these two different pattern speed and then to uh, produce the manifolds with the this assumption, the two different pattern speeds. The method we used here is NAF, a numerical analysis of the fundamental frequency. And uh, it was first introduced by Lascar in 1992. Okay, uh, we prepare a paper about that. And uh, we tried to understand this method uh, better <laughs> in depth and uh, uh, to apply it in our model, in end body, the end body simulation, in order to define the two different pattern speeds of the bar and the spiral arms. Okay, why not a discrete Fourier transform? Uh, the community also could use discrete Fourier transform. Discrete Fourier transform is, is used for a periodic uh, time series of, for a system that is uh, uh, described by periodic time series, uh, where the, well, where the, as we know, the Fourier series, in Fourier series, the frequencies are the integer multiples of a, of a fundamental frequency. As a result, they, uh, they give rational fractions. In this system, the, the frequencies are not described necessarily by an, a rational fraction. They can be in an irrational uh, relation. They can, uh, uh, we can also meet the linear combinations of this frequency. So if we can, could describe this, uh, system, we would use a, a quasi-periodic time series. 
So discrete Fourier transform would be, not be the the uh, the most convenient the convenient method for our problem. Uh, moreover, we have also uh, proved that uh, this method, numerical analysis of the fundamental frequencies, NAF, I will call it from now on, uh, gives us uh, the fundamental frequencies of a system with uh, a smaller error than in discrete Fourier transform with more accuracy. Well, the concept of this uh, uh, of this method is that well, we have a time series, a finite time series with uh, a finite time range t. This t uh, responds to uh, corresponds to uh, the two pi over t uh, frequency space. Okay, so divide we divide the frequency space into uh, sigma sigma uh, frequencies, let's call it imposed frequencies, we choose them, we choose them, we divide the frequency space in, in detail in sigma frequencies, and we multiply this time, time series, which we do not know the fundamental frequencies, it is what we, we search, the fundamental frequencies are hidden. We, we, we multiply this time series with either the cosine or sine uh, of sigma. This gives us a, a form of the integral, this integral, I choose this integral, integral uh, with these terms. Well, if we do, if we could conduct asymptotic analysis when sigma tends to uh, omega k and uh, uh, t becomes a large quantity, we'll see that this term prevails and uh, moreover, which is a sync function. Sync function is a, a sine x over x, and it has a maximum when it tends to one. So uh, the most uh, the most important from this is that we get a maximum of uh, of this f sigma f uh, s of the power spectrum spectrum when sigma tends to the fundamental frequency of the system omega k. So it's a way to locate the, uh, the fundamental frequency of the system by getting the maximum, uh, by locating where the power spectrum becomes maximum. Here we can see these integrals. They are very, uh, they look like a sync function and uh, they are, uh, they are, uh, uh, they have been calculated with the fundamental frequency of this time series 30. And we can see when sigma uh, is very close to 30, which is the fundamental frequency of the system, th these quantities become a uh, maximum. So the location of this, uh, of the maximum of the power spectrum can give us, uh, the the, can give us the fundamental frequency of the system is uh, when sigma tends to omega kappa. And so we took uh, take this uh, the, this uh, uh, this uh, uh, equation. Uh, this would give us where uh, the power spectrum become becomes maximum. Moreover, it can gives us the error d sigma in this algorithm enough. And uh, we calculated that the uh, this error is uh, proportional to t uh, to minus two. While in discrete Fourier transform, this error is proportional to t to minus one. So that's why we use this method. And uh, also, we use a Hanin, the Hanin filter, uh, which is well is known in bibliography, and uh, uh, it helps us to cut the side lobes and the multiples of the frequencies uh, in our problem. Okay, uh, we tried to apply this uh, method in uh, the end body simulation. Uh, we have the de surface density of the simulation in every time uh, ta, t of the simulation. This is the form of the surface surface density. Uh, the surface density is a function of uh, the radius r from the center of the galactic disk of uh, the angle of phi and uh, time ta t. And uh, we conducted Fourier analysis we chose uh, 10 modes, and but we'll, we are going to deal uh, with the, 
the, the modes M equals zero, which is the axisymmetric uh, uh, part of the disk, and the modes M equal two, which are the bar and the spiral arms. Okay, we calculated these sums. These are, these are like the, the integrals we, I presented you at uh, the previous slide. And these are, uh, these are the time series of M equal two perturbation, the bar and the spiral arms. And uh, as I, I presented to you before, I multiply this with either the cause or the sign of imposed frequency, Fk, Fk uh, times t. And uh, this can give us this power spectrum. And uh, as uh, I proved you, as I proved before, the maximum of the power spectrum gives us the fundamental frequencies of the system, and uh, we can search where where we have maximum of the power spectrum, uh, in which uh, in which radius, in which frequency, and we can get the the pattern speech of the bar and the spiral arms. And uh, we uh, made the contour plots of the power spectrum. It is uh, it is the same procedure that uh, uh, Selwood applied, and for different time periods of the simulation. And we can see, I don't know it is, if it is visible, we can see a second maximum, which corresponds to uh, a frequency of a half value, uh, which reveals a second pattern speed for the spiral arms. OK. I present you the values of uh, the bar and the spiral arms we, uh, we found in different uh, uh, in different time periods of the simulation. As we see, the, the value of the bar decreases because in the disk, there is a secular evolution of the disk. There is the, as we can, we can see it even there, even here, uh, the maximum decreases. Uh, it becomes, uh, it starts from 40, 40 to 50, and it goes on and sometimes it becomes 30, 30, 35 maybe. This uh, is due to secular evolution of the disk. Uh, as time passes by, uh, the angular momentum is transferred to the outer parts uh, of the disk. Um, we, we tried also to uh, construct an analytical form for the surface density and the potential uh, based on the NAF algorithm, algorithm and uh, the two different pattern speeds, omega b and omega uh, spiral, uh, that we have uh, located in its time period of the simulation. Well, the analytical uh, uh, form for the surface density uh, is obtained through Fourier analysis, but here the Time series of m equal two perturbation uh, is uh, is give are given by a NAF algorithm by, by the the the, the coefficients uh, a c a s b c b, b s I presented you before, and uh, this uh, analytical form is also constructed by the two. Uh, the two modes and the uh, two modes, the spiral arms and the bar rotating with two different pattern speed. Uh, same research in the gravity also revealed that the, uh, the gravity has the same modes rotating with the same exactly uh, frequencies, uh, pattern speeds, uh, as in the case of, of the surface density analysis. And uh, we also uh, conducted Fourier analysis, and uh, uh, we applied an AF algorithm, and uh, we also uh, constructed a, an analytical form for the gravitational portation. Okay. Well, these sums I present you to you in the previous slide take this form. Uh, we and not and. Uh, further, we did further simplifications, and we saw that uh, uh, the trigonometric terms with a minus prevail in this uh, form. Uh, well, the power spectrum of the trigonometric terms with a plus uh, is uh, less than one. So this is the final uh, model, analytical model for our potential. 
but, uh, but we also imported an, uh, an angle in this uh, form because we are in the corotating frame of reference lens with the bar. So we used this angle. This is the uh, final analytical form. And uh, we also, um, well, the, we also did the same for the spiral potential. Uh, it has a similar form, uh, and uh, but here the, we import another uh, angle, theta two, uh, which corresponds to the angle difference uh, that is produced due to the, uh, the the two different pattern speeds. It is cor it corresponds to the phase difference due to the. Uh, difference of the pattern speeds of the spiral arms and the, the bar. As we can see, this uh, angle theta two is, uh, uh, is dependent on time. That's why our system becomes, becomes time dependent in the case of the import of a second pattern speed. This was not the same in the, in the research with the, uh, in the research with a single pattern speed in the research of uh, constructing manifolds with, a sync, with the assumption of a sync pattern speed. We didn't, we didn't have this uh, angle theta two. This angle is what imports time, time dependence in our problem. Okay, uh, here I present you some exper experiments in order to uh, testify uh, whether our analytical form for the surface density uh, can uh, can reproduce the numerical uh, surface density that we get directly from the end body. Uh, these are the time series, uh, the time series of M equal to uh, mode. Uh, the red one is the one that uh, has been produced through a NAF algorithm. And uh, the black one is the one that, uh, that we get directly from Fourier analysis. Uh, from our end body simulation. Uh, we can see that uh, they are ge in general, in most cases, in a, a good agreement. Uh, we also uh, try to make the contours of the surface density, the ocean densities. Uh, for a, well, here we have three different cases. Here we have the case of the surface density produced by our analytical model. Uh, through NALF algorithm. And here we have the surface density for, of M equal zero and M equal two, the same modes that the theoretical form gave us, uh, but they are, give, they are obtained directly from the body simulation. And here is the full, uh, <laughs> with all the modes, uh, M equal zero to M equal 10, uh, picture of the ISO density. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, we also made some experiments uh, in order to uh, to testify whether the potential analytical form is uh, uh, is compatible with the, the end body. Uh, here I present you some curves of the azimuthal forces that are obtained by this. Uh, uh, this form uh, and the, uh, and from the potential we did it for the theoretical potential this is the uh, red line for the uh, numerical potential of m equal zero and m equal two and uh, the, the, the this the bl blue line is the the force the force the azimuthal force as it is obtained from the uh, the full potential with all the modes we did the same procedure uh, for uh, the effective potential. We, uh, we constructed the isocondus of the effective potential, known in bibliography as uh, zero velocity curves. This is the uh, form of the effective potential. We did it also in three cases. This is the theoretical zero velocity curves, curves from, for, uh, of uh, our analytical model. Uh, model. This is, these are the numerical for the same modes, and these are, this is the full, uh, full uh, zero uh, velocity care, curves from, from for, equal, for m equal zero to m equal ten with all the modes. 
we can see we can see that the analy our analytical model model can uh, represent uh, well the end body simulation although it has two modes m equal zero and m equal two uh, we can see it even in the morphology of the iso uh, iso densities uh, it can reproduce the spiral arms and the bar which it is our problem in uh, today's talk so i'm going on uh, the dynamic ana analysis okay uh, we test it we, we first tried to uh, to make the manifolds with the assumption of a single panther speed in this case as i told you before there is no uh, there there is not the the theta two this one theta two angle which uh, uh, which is the phase difference of the two of the two modes of the spiral arms and the bar rotating with two different pattern speeds and uh, it is what imports time dependence in our problem we don't have this angle in the in the as with the if we if we take into account the assumption of a single pattern speed we just have a theta and uh, our hamiltonian is 2d it the, the coordinates are R, theta, PR, P theta, the, the respective uh, uh, momentums. Momenta. Okay. And uh, we did, uh, we tried to construct the manifolds. Okay. It gives us manifolds. And uh, we did the same without the spiral uh, potential. Sorry. Without the spiral potential. We also, this is when we, I, I, I just have the, the potential of the bar. And this uh, uh, this is when I have the potential of the bar and the potential of the spiral, uh, spiral arms with the uh, with the assumption of a single pattern speed. Uh, we can see that in, uh, we have also manifolds when uh, I uh, I just have the potential of the bar, which is something that uh, it has been mentioned uh, in the bibliography before. Okay, well, how do I calculate the manifolds? The manifolds are calculated, of course, the first step is to locate L1 and L2, which are the unstable equilibrium points uh, in the galactic disk. And as I told you before, they are aligned with the bar. And uh, we should, uh, uh, the next step is to find for Jacobi, uh, for energies, uh, Lar larger than the Jacobi constant of L1 and L2, the unstable periodic orbits PL1 and PL2. And uh, along the un unstable eigendirection, we integrate these orbits in time and uh, we get these uh, manifolds I presented you before. Uh, we, well, we first uh, uh, consider a, a, a small segment along the unstable eigendirection and uh, integrate it in time. Okay, but this changes if uh, uh, if uh, I, I take into account the assumption of uh, multiple pattern speeds. As I, uh, I told you before, the system becomes uh, time dependent due to the import of uh, the angle theta two, that is a function of, uh, uh, that is a function of time. And uh, the, as a result, the Hamiltonian also becomes 3D. Uh, the coordinates are R, theta, as we can see, uh, the momentum uh, PR, P theta, and also another angle, theta two, and co the conjugate action, J two. The system becomes non-autonomous and uh, the unstable equilibrium point L1 uh, gets transformed to a periodic equilibrium point orbit, uh, GL1, uh, which circulates, makes a circle around L1. This is due to time dependence. As I told you before, there is time dependence in our problem and the equilibrium point becomes an orbit. And uh, well, uh, this makes our problem more complicated. Uh, in order to locate this uh, equilibrium, periodic equilibrium orbit, unstable equilibrium orbit, orbit GL1 and GL2, uh, we try to eliminate 
time dependence in uh, the Hamiltonian. The first step is to expand the Hamiltonian around L1 in terms of second order. And we, we apply a method, the method of normal form construction uh, in order to eliminate time dependence in, in the Hamiltonian. Uh, in order to eliminate theta two. Our aim is, uh, aim is to eliminate theta two. Okay, this procedure is a rigorous procedure. I give you some bibliography uh, about this method. And uh, we, also, we also, we located this uh, unstable periodic equilibrium or orbit GL1, which is, it, it makes a circle around L1. And the next step is to calculate the manifolds with the assumption of the two pattern speeds uh, that uh, emanate from this uh, unstable periodic orbit. Okay, time dependence also uh, has an impact, impact on uh, manifolds. The manifolds are time varying. They, they change with time and uh, it is difficult, it is not so easy to, visual, to visualize manifolds in the physical space as uh, we have visualized here, visualized them here. Um, in order to catch the manifold that changes with time, we apply the method, the method of aposedric double section. We first, we first made a stroboscopic uh, uh, map. We took an initial, a, a, a initial segment, a segment of initial conditions along the unstable eigendirection uh, of uh, GL1 and GL2. And uh, we integrated them in uh, integer uh, multiples of a period of the period TP. This period is given here. Uh, is, uh, uh, we can see that uh, it depends on the, the difference of the, two, uh, of the two pattern speeds. And uh, we integrated this, uh, uh, this initial conditions uh, for integers multiples of the, this period. And uh, we selected uh, some points there uh, that, uh, that satisfy simultaneously this uh, condition, the, which is the apocentric yeah. conditions. This, uh, we demanded these points to be, uh, to be simultaneously apocenters of the orbits in order to visualize the apocentric manifolds. Uh, well, these manifolds are uh, uh, for a time period of, of this time period of the simulation and uh, with the two different, they have been produced with the two different pattern speeds I presented you before. And we tried also to, uh, to compare them to the end body stru uh, structures. And we can see how they follow the rotation of the disk also, and can also depict uh, the, the structures we see at the, the end body. Uh, as a result, manifold theory can, uh, uh, can can uh, uh, incorporate the assumption of uh, two pa different pattern speeds in the galactic uh, disk and uh, can give us manifold that can support these structures we see uh, in the end body simulations. Well, another problem we, uh, uh, we try to solve is the velocity vector field of the orbits. So we try to produce the velocity vector field uh, and uh, to see how they uh, we positioned them over the manifolds and we saw that they are aligned with the manifolds and uh, we can see that these uh, uh, velocity vectors uh, are counterclockwise uh, inside rotation and clockwise outside rotation it's something we expect from the from the bibliography, and uh, we can. This is a this is something important because it can be an observational tool tool uh, that uh, the ve velocity vector fields go parallel with the manifolds, and uh, this is not the same in the case of 
uh, galaxies that uh, that uh, we uh, like grand design galaxies. I uh, well, I saw you here some uh, galaxies. It's a bar spiral galaxy, and this is a grand design galaxy. Bar spiral galaxies are uh, considered to uh, to be constructed by chaotic orbits. This, uh, this orbit, uh, uh, well, the manifold theory can uh, support uh, this, uh, this orbits and this structure. Uh, but in the case of grand design galaxies, uh, we, well, we think that the spiral arms uh, are, uh, are supported by organized orbits. Uh, there has been a research, a recent research on this uh, case of grand design uh, galaxies. Uh, the mechanism is well known is uh, the precession ellipsis mechanism that gives us uh, this uh, symmetric spiral structure. That's why we, we, we suppose that uh, uh, they, are, uh, they are obtained by, they, uh, we get this structure from organized uh, orbits, orbits. But in this case of uh, grand design galaxies, we we do not, uh, we suppose that the velocity vector field is not, uh, does not give a, a velocity vectors parallel with the spiral arms. It, it, it gives a, a velocity, a velocity vectors perpendicular to these orbits as a result per, perpendicular to these uh, spiral arms. This is something that uh, can be uh, an, well, a, a research item in the future and something that uh, also can be a useful tool for observational uh, people who will deal with observations uh, to, di to discriminate which case uh, of galaxy <laughs> you, you, uh, you, you make research on. If it is this galaxy is uh, constructed of manifolds, where, where the velocity vectors are parallel to the spiral arms, uh, parallel to the manifolds, or a galaxy that is constructed of uh, organized orbits where the velocity vectors are perpendicular to these uh, uh, orbits. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, for the interesting talk. It's time for questions. First, uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the room here is someone who wants to ask something. And then we go to the, if there is a question from our friends that uh, are online. Questions, please? Just a remark. Yes. You say the second pattern speed is half. Oh, is, stand is, up and come here. Is it really one over two? Because no, it's not. Well, this is a good races. remark. Okay, it, this is something I should mention. Okay, there were a lot of things. So some things, uh, <laughs> well, uh, I ignored some things because of the time. Uh, but uh, this is a good remark. Uh, the pattern speed of the spiral arms uh, is not uh, exactly the half uh, value of the, the respective one of the bar because of the, because as I said before, there is secular evolution on the disk. Uh, these values change with, uh, change with time. Uh, we cannot see, we cannot uh, suppose that uh, there is, uh, you know, there is, uh, this uh, is proportional, the bar and the spiral arms, uh, how they change with time is, uh, they, there is a strict, uh, a strict relation among them. And uh, in our case also, we saw that, sorry. Sorry. Okay. In our case, just a moment. Uh, and just a moment. Okay. I'll present you the values of the of the pattern speeds. It is not. Uh, it is not. Uh, yes, here uh, we can see that the value of the pattern speed of the bar at the first time period, at the earlier time period, is uh, 
33, and the pattern speed of the spar alarms is 14. Well, as time passes by and we go to the next period, we expect this value to decrease, okay, decreases due to secular evolution of the disk, but this value is approximately more or the same. So, uh, well, it's a, in, it's an approximation. It's an approximation in, in any body simulation. Even, uh, I think it's uh, this, uh, well, this question is open even for observational uh, data. I will see, show you this, or even this. This, uh, well, in this research work, Diaz and Lepin, I have give, given you two papers. Oh, in 2005 and 2019. Well, at first they didn't uh, put here uh, the minus or uh, plus minus two. Uh, they, in the first paper, uh, they made another approxim approx uh, approximation for the pattern speed of, of the spar alarms. After uh, some years in 2019, they changed these values. So it's an open question. This is an open question. Uh, it is, it is an open question that not only the, the relation uh, between the pattern speed of the bar and the pattern speed of, of the spar alarms, we are sure that they are different. The spar alarms rotate with a, a slower pattern speed. It is, well, the, all these experiments have given this evidence, but it is an open question how we can find the, uh, a more secure, a method of uh, determination of the pattern speed of the spar alarms. Uh, for, uh, this is what uh, uh, I conclude from the bibliography I have uh, studied until now. Uh, okay. okay. Thank you. Another question, maybe around. I, I have some one technical one. So this. GL1, that is uh, this object, let's say, is uh, uh, replacing the equilibrium points of the non uh, with the, the one simple pattern speed case. Yes, it's a. So instead it's of having orbit. L1, you have an orbit, GL1. Yes, and, and we and have so a orbit. So the question is what happens with the orbits around L1 in the non rotating case when you go to the two, two pattern speed cases? Pattern speed, what uh, happens with the orbits around L1? The orbits are out and one in the non in the single pattern speed case when you consider the system with the two pattern speeds. With a, two it, how are speed. they modified? Have you check that? No, I, we haven't checked that, but uh, it's a good question that we can. Uh, yes, we can. The, these objects in the single pattern speed case have their own manifolds, etc. So, what happens with all this stuff? And the other question is uh, okay, uh, have you checked for differences? in uh, the uh, surface density or in the kinematics in the two cases. Can you point to differences that can be used maybe for observational, uh, for observational distinction between the two cases? Do new features, morphological features appear when you consider two pattern speeds or mm -hmm. is there any something special in the kinematics where that can be used well, as a tracer? We, we haven't checked uh, this. Uh... Uh, this, uh, these remarks, uh, but uh, well, we can see that, uh, well, the, the main criticism, uh, which is uh, the, the, you haven't uh, computed manifolds with two pattern speeds. We computed manifolds with uh, two pattern speeds and uh, they give us more or less the same uh, morphology, I can say, mm -hmm. uh, but, a lot of things change, the, the calculation changes, and uh, uh, also we need to apply another, uh, another method. Uh, the way that we construct the action densities the, of the surface density changes. Uh, but uh, as for the morphological features, we can see that uh, may that, well, I did just a, a morphological comparison with the end body uh, here with the body snapshots. We can see that uh, morphologically and dynamically, it can support uh, the spar lamps and the bar. Uh, we haven't, well, there, there should be a research, of course, uh, which is uh, 
in the future, there can be a research in the kinematics also uh, for more comparison of the two cases. Yeah. And I can, I should say that for the other question of uh, GL1 and GL2, uh, that uh, orbits, it has, there is, a, there is a proof about that. There have been some papers that orbits with, Jacob, with energies larger than the Jacobi constant of L1 and L2 also gives manifolds that uh, travel parallel to the manifolds of uh, PL1, PL2 in the single pattern speed case. So there should be other also, <laughs> other also um, periodic orbits that uh, contribute to this structure, the manifold structure, not only GL1 and GL2. And, but it's very difficult uh, to, <laughs> to, it is very difficult, it's a complete, because of the time dependence. Okay. okay. Because it's really a technical question. Mm -hmm. So the story goes as follows. When you have one more pattern speed, mm -hmm. you have three degrees of freedom. Mm -hmm. The equilibrium point goes to periodic orbit. Mm -hmm. The Floquet matrix of the orbit is four times four. Mm -hmm. So you have to classify it according to the stability in three degrees. So that one is simply unstable. Mm -hmm. So the variant manifolds are one dimensional. You have, let's say, one unstable direction, one stable, and so on. Now, if you go around that orbit, you can try to prove that there exist things which are the generalizations of the Lyapunov periodic orbits in the 2 d But this now will be tori because you have one more frequency. So you have the frequency of the orbit times, times yeah. the other one. This tori would be of dimension two. Since the phase space is of dimension three, let's say three times, six, let's say three degrees of freedom, means that they are lower dimensional tori. Mm -hmm. So first of all, you need the lower dimensional CAM theory to demonstrate their existence. You cannot simply continue the family like you do in the 2D case. And second, you need to speak about their neighborhood transverse neighborhood and establish whether they are stable or unstable. So this is completely technical. There are people that have done that. We've never done this ourselves. And it goes well beyond anything that you could imagine, let's say, do a uh, let's say, in a short amount of time in uh, galactic dynamics. There have been people that have done this in an analogous case in celestial mechanics, which is the, the elliptic restricted free body problem, in which you have a continuation of the circular restricted free body problem with some time dependence, because now the perturbing planet is in an orbit that is not circular. And the answer in general is that numerically, if you construct a good normal form, like the one that we are now trying to do, eliminating the formal dependence on time, passing to good variables, essentially, taking the three, three degrees of freedom system and breaking it into a product of two times one, so that you don't see the one, one is just a frequency and you just see the two where you apply the usual tools. But all together, you can do, so you can try to do all of that and actually you can generalize as many pattern speeds as you would like to have. <laughs> By analogy, also, I mean, adding more degrees of freedom and more frequencies on the torus and so on and so forth. But in practice, what we saw is that just adding one essentially gives you all you need. I mean, if you have a model of spiral arms whose speed is not the same as the one of the bar, 
and you still claim that you need more pattern speeds and more frequencies and so on, then probably the model becomes so complicated that you don't need it all together. Well, okay, let's solve the problem with one or two pattern speeds and then you see if you should... Exactly. I mean, but the point, is, the point is that if you look at the morphology, let's say, of one of these snapshots that we have here on the mm -hmm. screen, then uh, certainly there is, I, I don't see any special feature Exactly. That uh, differentiated from the single pattern speed case. Well, that's precisely the point. And okay. that's <laughs> so the point is, and, and this is this is exactly the thing that the extra degree of freedom. Because where do you get that degree of freedom from? Let's say where 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 does it come from? It comes from the spiral which rotates with a different speed. But the spiral is a perturbation. So what you claim here is that your manifold will be of a higher dimension and there will be more variables that essentially represent time or better an angular variable, let's say omega, the difference of the two patterns is times yes. t. This mm -hmm. is the extra dimension. Mm -hmm. But since this is only a perturbation to the circular, to the, to the one pattern speed problem, that means that when you just take sections of that, over different values of that extra variables, you won't see something miraculously different from what you would have seen had you ignored the second pattern altogether. So the, the argument, which actually was, was the one we used in somehow in favor of the manifold theory altogether is that, yes, you can have more pattern speeds, but they will not really change the structures, the unstable structures, which outflow the material out of the region of the end of the bar in a way which is miraculously or spectacularly different from the one you would have done they had been ignored all the structures altogether. So what perturbation theory does, this Lee theory that Sardina mm -hmm. spoke about is just to make this formal. So just take this perturbation, eliminate it in some new variables, work with the good variables, then put it back to the back transform. And all you get are little oscillations of the manifolds around the basic shape, which more or less is the same as the one you got with the bar at all. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, it's also the case that a single pattern speed in a bad spiral case. See the difference. You have a spiral. Mm -hmm beyond the end of the bar, mm -hmm. but it has the same pattern speed with the bar. See, this is another case. So you have two structures. Mm -hmm. So you have a perturbation that in the inner, if you want in that case uh, of the galaxy is a bar one, and then uh, beyond the end of the bar is spiral, but with the same pattern speed. That could very well be, because actually when you make this all the spectrum enough analysis, mm -hmm. Nobody tells you when you just see which frequencies are there in the M equals two. Mm -hmm. You don't just see one speed or the other speed. You just see a spectrum of frequencies. I mean, maybe you see, a, essentially you get back to the idea of Selwood that you have modes which superpose, mm -hmm. which is very reasonable. And the only difference is that if you just let them superpose calmly with no interaction whatsoever, you would just get a static picture that with these contours that are looking okay already at that level. When you put them to interact, like here, you get corrections around that, but those corrections are not catastrophic. Uh, so, well, it would be nice if we can, at a certain point, establish a criterion to say that here we have one or two pattern speed based on the appearance or absence of a morphological feature or something specific in the kinematics, let's say more chaos or more something or an increase in the dispersion of velocities, that whatever. Okay, so let me check if there are some mm -hmm. questions, but I don't see anyone who is raising any hand. Well, if I miss something, please just pick up. No, I don't see anything here. So then 
Nesse questão que se puxa de ninguém.